Leax, who are on their way towards Nasdaq Stockholm, have today published a report for the first quarter of 2022. And with me today to comment on the report, I have its CEO, Tony Nichol. How are you, Tony? Uh, I'm great, Mike. Uh, good to be with you. It's good to have you here again. Uh, we'll start with the numbers. Uh, you reported a revenue for the quarter of 436.8 million sec, uh, a decrease in comparison to last year's first quarter of 471.2. Uh, all in all, a loss of 7.1 million sec. Uh, tell us, are supply chain issues still affecting these numbers? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think, uh, you know, to, to kind of go uh, through the numbers, you know, from a, from a revenue perspective, um, we saw that uh, in most of our end markets, our revenue is actually up. Um, very, very strong order boards. Uh, but in our largest segment, which is commercial vehicles, uh, the um, semiconductor uh, issue, uh, which we've talked about uh, now, you know, going back uh, a couple of consecutive quarters, is still having an impact on on that end market, maybe more than than some others. And uh, as as it is our largest end market, it definitely had an effect on our revenue in Q1. Semiconductor uh, shortages are still affecting your business. Uh, you were here in February talking about the Q4 report. Uh, since then, how has the situation changed? Uh, when speaking about the supply chain, I think the the, the thing I reported, um, you know, when I, when I met you in February, was that um, we were just seeing that there there wasn't a real light at the end of the tunnel, um, and I think that you know four mo four months later or how, however long we, we we've been since we've talked, um, we actually do see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, I think there's new capacity coming online for semiconductors, not something we're following, you know, uh, the, the, the real day to day. Uh, but our customers are reporting um, that they feel that these supply chain issues specifically on semiconductors will start to alleviate in the second half of this year. So we're pretty optimistic that that will be the case. So things will get better uh, at the end of this year, you think? Yeah, that's what that's what uh, you know. That's what the experts are saying. Um, you know, our our expertise is on on manufacturing uh, gears and and precision components, and uh, you know some of these macro items. You know, we we rely on our customers and what we what we see in the media and other other reports on on those uh, type of issues. But I think the general consensus is that uh, the semiconductor issue is getting better. During the quarter, war broke out in Ukraine. This is something that you highlight in the report having affected your business. Uh, could you tell us more? Yeah, well, um, you know, first of all, um, you know, our, our, our thoughts go to uh, anybody who's being affected directly by this conflict. Uh, you know, this is, uh, uh, you know, kind of unprecedented and something we haven't seen in Europe in, in, in you know, in, in 70 or 80 years. So uh, our hearts go out to the to the people in Ukraine. Um, but, uh, you know, on a, on a business level, for sure, um, the, as, as I as I reported in in our Q1 report, um, the biggest concern we have in the industry is inflation and uh, the war in Ukraine, uh, the sanctions on Russia, um, the, the, the entire energy sector specifically in Europe is being impacted by this. And I would say it is having a, a, a little bit more than an indirect impact on our business as we're seeing inflation all around us. What of your upcoming IPO? Does any of those things uh, affect that? Well, um, as, as you will know, um, we delayed the IPO. Um, we had talked about uh, listing in the first half of this year, and uh, we decided to uh, put that on hold. Uh, people that are watching the markets will know that there hasn't been any main market listings uh, in, in Stockholm NASDAQ this year so far. Uh, so, you know, we're, 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 we would love to be the first. Uh, but but certainly the markets, um, the turmoil around the markets uh, exacerbated by the by the Ukraine conflict uh, just said, you know, we're going to pause for the time being. Um, so so, yeah, we're we're uh, you know, our plan is still to list the company, uh, but we're just kind of taking it day by day uh, as the market stabilize in this situation, uh, unfortunate situation starts to rectify. 
Indeed, uh, but some companies have jumped the gun, however, AMF being one of them. Uh, you communicated a meaningful investment from them. Uh, is there any details here that you can share about volume and ownership? Ah, certainly. Um, so we're we're extremely pleased uh, if if you call it jump the gun. Um, you know, we we uh, have termed this as a as a pre IPO uh, investment uh, from from AMF. And again, your viewers uh, I, I think will be incredibly familiar with who who AMF is. Um, and so AMF has come in with a 300 million sec investment. Uh, which equates to a 28.9% ownership in LIAC. So a pretty significant stake for, for AMF in, in, in the LIAC group. What will their influence look like on LIAC? Well, um, uh, you know, I think their their influence will be felt uh, in in a couple of ways. But number one, as a strategic investor, um, we we view um, AMF as as a partner, um, and uh, you know they showed a lot of confidence in the company by coming in in a pre IPO situation, um, which is uh, you know just a wonderful uh, opportunity for us to 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 work with one of the best. Mm. Uh, thank you, Tony. It will be very, uh, very interesting to see how it develops. Uh, that was all my questions, but I'll thank you very much for your time and wish both you and Liax uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing you again.